It's the Spanish-speaking country with the biggest population, it's home to the largest pyramid in the world, and its capital city is sinking. These are just three of the things that you will learn about Mexico. Welcome to the Rebooted GeoFocus channel. Today we're going to focus on Mexico. Mexico has a population of approximately 130 million people, making it the 10th most populous country in the world and the most populous Spanish-speaking country. It's located in North America, to the south of the United States. Some people mistakenly think that North America only consists of Canada and the United States, and that Mexico is part of Central America instead. Let me correct two misunderstandings. First, Mexico is part of North America. And two, Central America lies to the south of Mexico, but is also part of North America. It's a region of North America. The Central American countries bordering southern Mexico are Guatemala and Belize. Mexico has 9,330 kilometers of coastline, most of which faces the Pacific Ocean and the Gulf of California to the west, and the rest of which faces the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea to the east. Its total area is 1,964,375 square kilometers, which makes it the 13th largest country in the world, slightly bigger than Indonesia and a little smaller than Saudi Arabia. It's also roughly three times the size of Texas. Speaking of Texas, Texas, along with California, Nevada, Utah, and most of Arizona, about half of New Mexico, and parts of Colorado and Wyoming, used to be part of Mexico. The United States took those areas from Mexico in the Mexican-American War of 1846 to 1848. Indigenous people lived in what is now Mexico before the arrival of the Spanish, who colonized the area and turned it into the core of New Spain. It remained part of the Spanish Empire until Mexico eventually gained its independence from the Spanish in 1821. The pre-Spanish peoples included the Mexica people of the Aztec Empire, which ruled much of central Mexico from the capital, Tenochtitlan, the site of present-day Mexico City. The Mexica spoke the Nahuatl language, or Nahuatl. But throughout the other areas of Mexico that were eventually conquered, there were many other ethnic groups speaking many different languages and dialects. Today, Spanish is by far the dominant language, though it's only the de facto official language. There's no law that makes it the official language. There are 68 national languages recognized by the government, including Spanish and indigenous languages, as well as four varieties of sign language. Obviously, the influence of the indigenous peoples and their cultures is a huge part of what gives Mexico its unique identity. Nahuatl, or Nahuatl, is still spoken by around 1.7 million people, and Mayan languages are spoken by around 800,000, and several other languages have hundreds of thousands of speakers each. Many place names come from Nahuatl and other indigenous languages, and even though most people speak only Spanish these days, they sometimes mix in some words from the area's indigenous language. Another aspect of Mexican society that's a result of its history is religion. According to the 2010 census, 82.7% of Mexicans are Catholic, and 92.42% practice some form of Christianity or an offshoot religion. But some different traditions accompany Catholicism in Mexico, due to religious syncretism. Religious syncretism means the mixing of traditions from one religion into another. For example, 45% of Mexican Catholics believe in reincarnation, and 31% believe that communication with spirits is possible. An example of this syncretism is the festival Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. This festival derives from ancient Aztec festivals honoring the dead and seeking contact with them. But on the calendar, it coincides with the Catholic celebration of All Hallows' Eve, which you might know as Halloween, All Hallows' Day, or All Saints' Day, and All Souls' Day, a Christian feast dedicated to remembering the dead, including saints. On the Day of the Dead, people build private altars dedicated to their loved ones who have died. The altars are decorated with some of the deceased person's favorite foods and other items to encourage that person's soul to return and spend time with them. The Day of the Dead is on UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Mexico has a number of different types of terrain, and the landscape in each of the various regions can vary greatly. One hugely important feature of Mexico is its mountains, including the Sierra Madre mountain system. Its three mountain ranges are the Sierra Madre Occidental to the west, 
the Sierra Madre Oriental to the east, and the Sierra Madre del Sur range in the southwest. Between these mountain ranges lies the central Mexican plateau. These features give Mexico much of its diversity in climate and landscape, between the coastal areas, mountains, and plateau. Mexico has 31 states and one federal capital area, Mexico City. Those 32 federal entities can be grouped into six regions. First, Baja California is a narrow peninsula extending southward from the border with the U.S. state of California. To be very clear, Baja California, which means Lower California, is in Mexico and is not part of the U.S. state of California. This region is very dry and arid, with much of it covered by desert. It's also dominated by several large mountain ranges that rise from sea level on the western side of the peninsula. The well-known border towns of Tijuana and Mexicali are located in Baja California. Tijuana has the second most populous metro area in the country, after Mexico City, northern Mexico. This is a huge region consisting of seven different states, with a lot of different geographic features. Much of the north consists of arid or semi-arid desert. This includes the Sonora Desert in the northwest, which stretches from the ocean to the Sierra Madre Occidental mountain range. On the other side of the Sierra Madre Occidental lies the Chihuahuan Desert, which stretches eastward to the Sierra Madre Oriental mountain range, the Pacific Coast. The southern end of the Sierra Madre Occidental range lies within the northern part of this region, but the main mountain range here is the Sierra Madre del Sur. Between the ocean and the mountains, there are beautiful tropical beaches that attract tourists from around the world. Its most famous coastal resort towns are Acapulco and Puerto Vallarta. Also in this region is Guadalajara, which is situated on the central Mexican plateau, or Mexican altiplano, on the other side of the mountains. It's the capital of the state of Jalisco, and it has the third largest metro area in the country, after Mexico City and Tijuana. In its southeastern state of Chiapas, you can find the largest jungle in Mexico, La Candong Rainforest. That rainforest also extends into the southern part of the next region, the Yucatan Peninsula. This region is quite distinct from much of the rest of Mexico because of its Mayan heritage and Mayan archaeological ruins, and many locals still speak a Mayan language in their everyday lives. Facing both the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, this is also a popular area for tourists visiting its splendid beach resort towns like Cancun and Playa del Carmen. The Bajío. This region gets more rainfall than most other areas of the country, with around 700 millimeters per year. It's known for its efficient agricultural production and is often said to be the region of Mexico with the highest quality of life. Central Mexico. This region includes the capital, Mexico City, which is a federal district like Washington, D.C. in the United States, and it includes the surrounding areas of the Central Mexican Plateau, areas in the Sierra Madre Oriental mountain range, and neighboring coastal areas in the state of Veracruz. In the state of Puebla, you can find the Great Pyramid of Cholula. It's the largest pyramid in the world, based on volume. It's not the tallest. The tallest is the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. But this one is much wider. In Puebla, you can also find Cuexcomate, which is often referred to as the world's smallest volcano, but it's actually a geyser, and not a volcano at all. Central Mexico is the most densely populated region of Mexico, particularly the capital, Mexico City, which has a population of around 9.2 million, and neighboring Mexico State, which has a population of around 17 million. Greater Mexico City, which includes 60 nearby towns and cities in Mexico State and the nearby state of Hidalgo, has a population of around 21.8 million, making it the second largest metro area in the Western Hemisphere, after Sao Paulo in Brazil. One amazing fact about Mexico City is that the city is sinking. It's sinking at a rate of around 1 meter per year. The city is at an elevation of around 2,250 meters, so it's not going to sink into the ocean anytime soon. But the sinking results in roads cracking and buildings tilting. The highest point in all of Mexico is also found in the central region, Pico de Orizaba Volcano, which is at an elevation of 5,636 meters. You might notice snow at the peak of the mountain. Snow? In Mexico? I thought it was a tropical country. Well, parts of Mexico are tropical. The Tropic of Cancer runs through Mexico, so the portion of Mexico south of that line technically lies within the tropics, while the portion north of the Tropic of Cancer is in the temperate zone. But places in the tropical zone geographically don't necessarily have tropical climates. 
Below the Tropic of Cancer, the areas at lower elevations, up to 1,000 meters, are warm and hot year-round. But the higher you go in elevation, the more seasonal variation there is in temperatures. For example, the capital, Mexico City, sits at an elevation of above 2,300 meters and has a subtropical highland climate, with warm summers and mild winters and cool temperatures at night. North of the Tropic of Cancer, in the temperate zone, we see the same tendency for greater seasonal variation in temperatures with cool winters, especially at higher elevations. Mexico has the 15th largest economy in the world and the second largest economy in Latin America, after Brazil. This is partly because it's a neighbor of the US, where it sends many of its exports, and Mexican workers living in the US send remittances back to Mexico. In other words, they send money home. Remittances comprise 3 to 4% of Mexico's GDP. Mexico's main exports include cars and delivery trucks, automotive parts, computers, and crude petroleum, in other words, oil. Another big sector of the economy is tourism, which represents about 17.3% of GDP. This is in part thanks to the 31 UNESCO World Heritage Sites that are located there, and in part thanks to the natural beauty and climate, and in part thanks to the friendliness of the people. But despite the large economy overall, there's a big wealth gap, with over 50% of the population living below the poverty line. This is the main reason why many Mexicans have migrated to the United States. It's certainly not because Mexico lacks beauty, culture, and amazing people. People from Mexico, what is it that you love about your country? And what would you like other people to know about it? And other people, what questions do you have for the people of Mexico? Write them in the comments down below. Do you want to see videos on the GeoFocus channel before anyone else? Become a member of this channel and you'll see videos one week early as well as other benefits. For more information, click the join button which is right next to the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.